I'm Ellen Grant. I'm a neuroradiologist specialized in pediatric neuroimaging. And I came to Children to help improve pediatric neuroimaging and basically to help us better understand the developing brain. Right now, surprisingly little is known about human brain development. We haven't had the tools to look safely. In infancy and childhood, the brain is developing so rapidly and is also very vulnerable. In fact, many brain disorders are likely to have their beginning in these early time periods, including autism and ADHD. If we can detect these diseases early, we are likely to have a much larger impact. Look at these MRI images. Here the babies are facing us and the MRI allows us to see inside the head. During this time period, the brain increases more than three times in volume, the neurons develop more than twice the number of connections, and the energy used by the brain also increases by more than twice. We can take those MRI images and also look at the surface of the brain. You can see that the surfaces change dramatically during early development. Here we see from a baby that is 10 weeks premature to a baby that is just past term. Complex folding is extremely important. It is what makes us thinking conscious human beings. To better understand this complex folding, we can take these surfaces and make them into a computer model. We don't just want to see folding, we want to measure it. Measurements allow us to characterize development and understand how abnormalities emerge. Here we show how we can use the computer model to create a movie. We are just showing the folding and not the increase in brain size so you can see the spatial orchestration of the folding with age. We can also use a special MRI technique called diffusion tractography to see how the brains are wired or connected together. Here I'm showing a brain of a premature baby born 10 weeks early. We are looking from the top down with the face at the top of the frame. Blue fibers are connections running up and down and help the brain control its body. Red fibers run right and left and support communication between hemispheres. Green fibers are connections running front to back and back to front and support our cognitive functions. This type of information is extremely valuable and has great potential in helping us to determine if parts of the brain are wiring normally before they actually come online. To help our young patients, we need to get these scanners as close as possible to the babies. We are currently pioneering a baby-sized MRI that will go in the neonatal intensive care unit. The other two modalities we are developing are near-infrared spectroscopy and magnetoencephalography. Near-infrared spectroscopy is totally safe, like ultrasound, and can be performed right at the bedside. It provides us with information about cerebral oxygen consumption. Since oxygen is a primary fuel for neurons, this gives us information on regional brain neural activity and neural health. Magnetoencephalography, instead of looking at consumption of a fuel neurons use, like in NEARS, we use it to measure the actual fluctuations in magnetic fields caused by the electrical neural activity. Currently, only adult head size systems exist. With funding from the National Science Foundation, we are building the first MEG optimized for kids up to three years of age, which we call the Baby MEG. The Baby MEG will allow us to detect and localize neural activity to better understand how neurons begin to work together to perform important cognitive functions. I think it's really important to not just get pretty pictures but get information about the structure and physiology of the developing brain because it's a very complex orchestration, early brain development, and using as many techniques as possible to look at the brain development in different angles is extremely helpful to help understand how the whole picture works together. Our goal is to optimize the neurological function of every child coming through Children's. We will be the only hospital in the world to have a neuroimaging center in close proximity to the intensive care units. This means we'll be able to monitor critically ill infants and children to best diagnose abnormalities, guide therapy, and monitor treatment effectiveness. Intervening early is critical, especially in these very young brains. Children's has a deep understanding of the importance of imaging. It is the only way to peer inside the brain to see what is happening. It is the only way to see how it is growing and responding to treatments. We can achieve this with hard work from the best minds in many disciplines and with generous financial support.